goal of my artwork is to make people have these positive situations around curiosity, to make them more curious. As an interactive artist, my art, the art is not in the artwork that I make. The art is in the situation to me. So like somebody will um, interact with something and it's that situation between the person and the piece and how they decide to move through it, how they decide to interact. Will they explore? What are they gonna do? That's the art to me, because I'm not a conceptual artist in the form of trying to make people think a certain way. All I'm gonna do is set up situations, and, I'm gonna, and that's a collaboration in itself. I set up a situation, and the person who's interacting, they have to decide how to approach it. And all I'm gonna do, and what I'm gonna constantly do is, the more curious a person is, I want to try to set up that situation, that interactive art, well, I'm gone and I can't be there to do anything. I want to reward their curiosity. Anytime they wonder, what if I touch this? I want them to be like, oh, sick, awesome. Something cool happened. What if I touch this? Oh, cool. What if I touch these at the same time? Something totally different happens. What if me and this person does this over here and this over here and we work together, we can unlock things. We can, it, it just become every, the further someone becomes curious, I want, I just want to reward that because I think curiosity, um, that's all of my art, like the central goal of my artwork is to make people have these positive situations around curiosity, to make them more curious because, I mean, a person who's curious is going to be a little less judgmental in my mind. They're going to wonder rather than assume. Um, somebody who's curious is, is going to listen a little bit more than they talk. So technology as a whole, I think has like always, always been a part of art. Um, we're talking about a specific kind of technology nowadays. Um, and it's just because, you know, um, internets, uh, the web, um, a lot of digital and interactive technology that takes place in the computer is new and more accessible and becoming more and more accessible. That is now becoming this technology that's beginning to be used a lot in art. But I mean, art and technology have never been separate in my opinion. Um, think if you think to like Leonardo back in the Renaissance, I, I'm pretty sure Leonardo was one of the, but like Da Vinci and all of them, like they were combining tech, they were making technology and using that as an artistic practice. Um, you look at uh, anything that anyone's done, just the idea of pers uh, forced perspective and doing perspective in art, they were using tools and technology to give them that perspective, paint and pigment. As things have changed, like as art has changed, as technology has changed, any technology has always been brought into art. So when when I think about the idea of like art mixing with technology, it always has. Everything mixes with technology. We as a people, as um, the human race, when a new technology comes out, be it writing, um, be it uh, the printing press, whatever it is, we have incorporated that into um, our creative and emotional expression in every way we can. So technology there's no way that like so when i'm asked like how has technology made an impact on my art the same way that it has for everyone regardless of their medium it, it's just it allows me to experiment and it allows me ways to play with what i with what i feel and try to get that human inner feelings and emotions and ideas out there a little bit differently um, in a way that I suffer from in terms of just communication. Um, and I think that's what's fun about um, art and technology and all of that is that it's, I mean, we as the human race are horrible at communicating. <laughs> um, we are, we all have, we have different languages. We keep inventing all of these things to make us better at it. The internet, things like that. And like, we just keep missing, <laughs> like, we we work so hard to communicate with each other but there's just this barrier about like our emotional mental state which are two of the same thing and our ability to understand another person's emotional mental state and like a lot of my art um plays with that area plays with technology in that area because as horrible and bad as we are with communication i think it's beautiful and 
poetic and wonderful that we're just we keep inventing stuff to try to do it better like we non-stop are trying to communicate so I love taking old technology. I have this piece, Regenerative Letters, and it has a typewriter. It's got like a 90s screen from a old computer. It's got a crappy speaker and you type on the typewriter and it's hard to type on and it goes, um, it actually goes into a computer program. I had to, I actually had to wire up all the keys so they close circuits and stuff with an Arduino. And it also makes the phonetic sounds of any of the letters. So f, k, p, m. And it's very distracting and it kind of makes it hard to communicate. And then you send and you can email to anyone you want in the world, any message you want with regenerative letters. And but it takes whatever you wrote and it takes all of that information, all of the letters, but also how long you were holding the key, how long it took you to start, whether you deleted or backspaced, all of that stuff. And then it creates a, ge a generative image with it. So like you watch it form on screen before you and it doesn't send your letter. It doesn't send your note, your message. It sends that. So it sends this terrible garbled communication, but there's like a beauty in the action of it. And so you know, I just think a lot about technology as that technology is the thing that allows us to try to project what we feel and what we mean to each other regardless of how bad we are at it and we're never gonna be good at communicating but like just that effort is just beautiful When I started to get into interactivity and started to get into interactive technology like creative coding, um, touch designer is my software of choice. It was learning that I think was the missing thing in my creative activity. So I'm not good with technology. I mean, if you look at my studio, I've, I'm not good at like managing my technology. I've got cords. It's just trash. I mean, that's an artist studio for you. It's trashed and like you can see all sorts of crap everywhere. But I enjoy figuring stuff out and I, because I'm not great with coding or a lot of technologies, every time I have to learn something new, um, it's very rewarding when I figure it out. So with animation, I would come up with an idea and I felt rewarding, like, oh, this idea is great. And then it'd be done and people would see it. They'd be like, oh, that was great. And I was like, yeah, that feels good. Everything else in the middle sucked. It was hard on me. It was just, it wasn't rewarding. With interactivity and with like integrating this interactive technology that I don't really understand that well, every time I learn something new, I get that rush of that rewarding. Um, so like the first time I wrote a piece of code without copying and pasting it and it worked right away without like troubleshooting it for an hour, I danced, I was so happy. And since the process has become the most enjoyable aspect and that process involves learning and figuring stuff out, like it's just constantly a good feeling. It's just constantly as I'm working, that's the best part, the finished projects like i'll put it up and i'll figure something out while watching people interact with it that also becomes part of the process i've been i saw a documentary about slime mold over a decade ago and for 10 years i've always wanted to do something with slime mold and then recently I've been doing audio sonification and making sound out of visuals. And I was like, oh, wait, boom, those go together. So like, it's more of a collaboration with the tech and stuff like that. It's a lot of that, like your idea change. It's very rare that I have an idea that I start working on and it ends the way I thought it would begin because you learn, oh, if you're, if you're a person who's learning the technology as you're going and Anyone who's afraid of technology, once you start learning and get used to it, oh my gosh, it's it's better. It, it's better to learn it as you go because you don't get stuck in this, I should do things this way. But I like, things won't work the way I think they will. Rarely do they work the way. And so I have to figure out some other approach or the way it does work, 
brings me to a whole nother idea. And that, and that happens all the time. Or new ideas come, I have to write them down and decide, do I want to continue on the path that I'm on, or do I want to veer off in this direction? And I have to make that choice. And it's a really good choice to have, to say, oh, look, I got these, this is the way this technology works. Um, I didn't realize that, I didn't realize that this motion sensor uh, was like bouncing sound off of me. So what can I do to use that? Or I didn't realize that um, a, video, a Kinect depth camera could not work outside. So how do I make something work outside? And then you learn about like PoseNet and AI body tracking with a webcam and you're learning something new. That's what, that's what it's about. And I can't imagine it's that different with a sculptor or a painter. I think the technology world, um, since technology is new, it, it seemed really elitist for a while, but now with with technology having made the internet and stuff, you can learn anything um, with time and with curiosity. If you're interested in it, you can figure it out. There's so much, so many sources on YouTube, on Vimeo, on just there's so many tutorials and stuff. And the whole ste uh, STEM and STEAM, all of that is really reaching out to people who are of lesser, um, who have lesser income, who have been overlooked and ignored. Um, the people who are just as curious, just as interested, who have been told their whole lives, this isn't for you. Tech is starting to say, oh no, this is for you. Look, uh, your cell phone, like, your cell phone, your parents' cell phone with a cracked screen that they gave you that only works with Wi-Fi, there's plenty of cool tech stuff you can do with that. There's, there is a motion sensor in there, let's party. Uh, there is a camera in there, let's party. There's, there's accelerometers, there's gyroscope, there's, there's light sensor, let's party. Um, and I think that's wonderful that that's there. And I think art is trying to do it one or two more little curious positive experiences to help reinforce that idea that it's more rewarding to wonder and to learn and engage than it is to actually just assume you understand something and then walk away.